I'm not speaking for y'all long. Let's open up with prayer. Oh, Father God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For what you're doing, oh Father God, in this house today, oh Father God. We thank you, oh Father God, for letting your anointed spirit reign in this place, thank oh Father you, God. Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we invite you into this place today, yes. oh Father God. Father God, we ask that we experience in you, oh Father God, like never before today, oh Father God. Father God, we lay everything at your feet, oh Father yes. God. Father God, we have the victory, oh Father yes. God. Lord, we speak life to every situation, oh Father God. Yes. Father God, it might not seem good, oh Father God, it might not look good, but God, we trust you today, oh Father God. For we walk by faith and not by sight today, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we will praise you, oh Father God, and lift you up, oh Father God, for everything that you've been doing, oh Father God. Lord, you kept us throughout the week, oh Father God. Father God, we didn't go without anything, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you praise today, oh Father God. Oh God, I decrease right now, Father God, and you increase in me today, oh Father God. Father God, speak through me today, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, let your word go forth, oh Father God, on good ground, oh Father God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So we're gonna do things a little different since it is youth Sunday. Hallelujah. So let me get all the youth on the front row. That's right. Huh? <laughs> y'all come on up. Y'all come on up. The youth. We have the youth. Youth Sunday. So we're gonna do something different. Um. God give, gave me this uh, message and it was Pastor Mary actually confirmed it all over the phone so first I'm going to get my son Deshaun to come up get him to come up now oftentimes, as youth young adults also this is real criminal to us because sometimes we feel like I'm old enough to do what I want to do. Mm. <laughs> Thank you for confirming that. <laughs> we feel like we old enough to do what we want to do. I can I can do this. Dad don't know what he's talking about. Mom don't know what she's talking about. I got it all under control. They took <laughs> They told me not to do it, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want to find out on my own. Mm -hmm. So how many parents experience that with their children? Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. I can do it. So I'm going to show you a situation that occurred to my household. <laughs> 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 Son, wake up. Let's start your day. I don't want to wake up. I'm tired of this. Every morning, I got to wake up, go to school, make good grades, come back, do chores. You know what? I want my inheritance. I want all my, I want my money, and I'm leaving. Huh? Wait, wait, wait. You tired of doing your chores and you tired of making good grades? What? Come home and then have to do chores. I have to come home, do my chores, and then you guys yell at me when I get home. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. So what do you want me to do? I want my inheritance. I want my money, and I want to leave. That's really what you want. Yes. I want my money. So after you leave, that's just it? You're just going to do whatever you want to do? I don't know. Yeah. You know, go across the country, you know, do something nice. Yeah, yeah, you do something Well, here's your money. I'm not going to hold you. I love you. On your journey. <laughs> So, <laughs> kids think they know everything. Yeah. Yep. So wrong. No, it's not. So, I'm, this is all about me. I'm not talking about anybody out here. <laughs> this is all me. So, I thought I was grown. About 16, 17, yeah about that time. I was like, ah, I can do it. 
and it was hard. Everything from the outside looking in looks decent, but from the inside out, it's falling apart. So I came to Orlando, and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a job up here. My wife wanted to come up here to go to school. So I said, okay, I'll get a job, I'll find a place to live, this, that, and the other. And uh, I came up here. Okay, now, let me tell you, when I came up here, no car. That was probably something I should have had. <laughs> <laughs> I came up here, no car. I found a job, found a uh, apartment, had a roommate. <laughs> yeah, had a roommate. So I'm like, okay, this might can work. So I'm up here, I got a job, I'm working. And I'm calling home, like, everything good down there? Everything good down there, baby? I'm like, okay. So I'm up here working. Okay. So I'm going to work. Finally, we get married. Come back up here. And I come up with no job. They got fired. Ah. So <clears throat> I got fired as soon as I came back. I said, what did I get fired for? <laughs> oh, because you didn't call out. I said, I told you I was going to get married. What do you mean I didn't even call out? So, huh. so anyway, uh, I was like, yeah, you have to call out every day that you're going to be out. So okay. So now you got this 19-year-old wife <laughs> and a baby and lost the job, the job going. So now we're in an apartment and, um, and everything just started falling apart after that. Roommate never wanted to do nothing. So one day he just ditched us. Didn't say nothing. So it was like, okay, gotta find a job, gotta find a job. What, nobody hiring? I ain't really had no experience. I only been working at the job for about maybe four months. So I really had no experience. So one by one, things just got worse and worse. One day the lights went out. One day the gas went out. Next day eviction notice on the door. So, all me, wife, and my daughter sitting in a, an apartment with nothing. Oh, we had a box of kicks. That's what we had. <laughs> that my daughter loved. Just to sit on the floor and eat her box of kicks. Ain't nothing matter in the world but that box of kicks. You should give her the whole box and just pop them away. So, <clears throat> Pastor came. Pastor D came and he was, he uh, came over and he said, Everything all right? I said, yeah, everything good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all, is it? I said, you sure everything good? I said, yeah, we just turned in early. You know, I was tired. He said, you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. So he, he, he left. <laughs> he left. And probably maybe an hour later, he come back. He said, the Holy Spirit just told me to come back. I say, really? <laughs> he said, yeah. He said, why don't y'all come to my house for a little while? I was like, man, it's 9, 10 o'clock at night. You know, at the time I just met there, I said, I already really know. So I'm like, man, it's night, 9, 10 o'clock at night. He's like, yeah, just, just grab some stuff and just come over. And he came over and proceeded to stay over for a lengthy amount of time. So, he was there to, to, to lead and guide us a lot as we were still growing up. So we left home and it was like, oh, we got this all under control. We got this. And we really did. Go to, uh, there you go. In Luke chapter 15, verse 11. And he said a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all his 
gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance mm. with righteous living. So a lot of times we can give our kids something and what they do with it is on them. What they do with it is on them. I get on. I ain't picking on you, son. You mark. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the new age kids are into uh, shoes. Shoes is like the new thing. Buying and selling. Buying and selling kids. Some people make good money off of it. But it's like, okay, you get. Two hundred dollars, and then you buy two hundred dollar shoes, and I'm pulling my hair out like, you just bought two hundred dollar shoes. Some shoes you finna walk on the dirty ground with. Some shoes somebody gonna step on. Some shoes somebody gonna spill ketchup on. You spend two hundred dollar on this, and sometimes kids do stuff, and you expect something, but it's not. You don't get what you expected. Mm -hmm. Don't get what I expected. So sometimes mommy tell you to do something and you do it the way you want to do it, but it wasn't the way she really expected it to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and not many days after that, younger son got all began to be in one. Mm -hmm. So now this young man took all the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he said, I want all my money. So let's say let's let's say it was three thousand dollars just to make just to make a conversation. And you went out and just balled out. Young people turn. Y'all just went on a spending spree. But y'all just did whatever you wanted. You went to the mall, you got Gucci out, Yeezys on your feet. You just dapper down. You go to the club. Yeah, I got money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know what y'all want me to do. Well, I mean, man, you make switch up. I know how I did. I said this was about me. Yeah, yeah, I got it, yeah. Drink some, yeah, yeah, bottle over here, bottle over here, yeah, 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 got it. Go out, have a good time. Then next thing you know, it's all gone. Everybody you helps help spend the money with you. Oh. Don't. Everybody who was in your corner when you had it, yep. gone. 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 So when you need help, they still gone. gone. Yep. They still gone. And now you without nothing. Now it's like, okay, I need a job. I don't got a place to stay. I don't got a car. I don't got a horse. I don't got a turtle. I don't got nothing. Nothing. I don't have nothing. All of them. So you don't have no pockets. Your pockets got holes in them. And then it's a famine. So everybody trying to keep everything to themselves. Sure. It's like, you know, so you go to somebody's house, man, you got a piece of bread? Mm, I got like five kids. I can't really give you this last piece of bread right now. So you is just searching around trying to get something. And we're in a state of famine. And he went and joined himself to he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So he met someone and someone gave him a job. And his job was to feed the pigs. So now, now mind you, you just left my house. Well you had shelter. Food, uh, clothing. Family, love, all that. Well, okay, we all got modern times. Okay, we're going to say air conditioning, <laughs> water. Soap. You know what I'm saying? You got your everything. Everything is there. Now, you looking for a job and you out here feeding pigs. So, forget the chores that I gave you. All I told you was to take out the trash, maybe do the dishes. That's it. Take out the trash and do the business. Now, your job is feeding pigs. <laughs> feeding pigs. <laughs> right? Okay, let's keep going. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. 
he rather he wanted the food that the pigs was eating because he was so hungry. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, mm, mm, mm. Right he said, there. How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Mm. Everybody Jesus. who was serving my father is eating fine. Every I had it good, basically. I had it made. But now I don't have a cent in my pocket. I'm out here in the streets. I left home. I'm destitute. I'm hungry. All of this. Broke, busted, and disgusted. All of it. <laughs> and I had everything at home. Next. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Next. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And ran and fell on his neck and wow. kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe yes, and put it on yes, him. Yes. And put a ring on his hand uh -huh. and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. So, you have a sibling. And you feel like, man, he showed favoritism. I like Nathan more than I like Kai. Or I like Kai more than I like Nathan. That's what they're not they, they in a few. Why did I spend so much time with Deshaun? Why Deshaun always going with Dad? Go to the next verse. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gave me a kid, gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. Have friends over. Okay. But as soon as thy son <clears throat> was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. Mm. It was it was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Awesome. <clears throat> okay. So the 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 brother is upset. You never did this for me. You ain't never thrown no party for me. I ain't never have uh, my friends over. And he went out, did all the things that was to do, sinned all the sins you can do, and he come back and get a party thrown for him? I'm going to give you a, a, a talk about me. My own um, boss. She's a... Uh, Demanding. She's on you. What are you doing? What you doing after that? What you doing this? What you doing that? All the time. 
But how many know that if they did, if someone didn't love you, they wouldn't tell you what to do. If I didn't love my kids, I would tell them, go do what you want to do. Go wherever you want to go. Whatever time you want to come back, just come on back. Go over them. I don't care. Take the car. Do what you want to do. I would say that. But because I love you, I'm giving you direction. My boss is on me because she wants me to go higher. She's on my case because she wants better. And she knows it's going to take for me to go through all these things, all of these trials, and all of these learning experiences for me to excel to the next place. Children, your parents, giving you direction. Just because I might spend more time with Deshaun is because maybe I'm trying to push Deshaun to a level, a different level. Sometimes there are different variables that happen. Okay? We all love you. We all love you. But there's certain leadership that we have to take with each and every child. Each and every child got their own way you got to deal with. Them. Some require more attention than others. Some don't. <laughs> But it's because we have faith and trust in you. It's like, okay, I know my daughter. She's going to be all right, but let me help this one in this area. Okay. Sometimes this one is all right, but let me help you in this area. So we all got our own things. But we try to give you direction yeah. on the right way to do things because we have already experienced uh -huh. it. We already went through it. Uh -huh. We already had these same trials that you're going to come up against. Like you think everything is new, ain't nothing new. Y'all deal with peer pressure, we dealt with peer pressure. The same thing. I get peer pressure now. <laughs> to this day, it's peer pressure don't stop. But in the story, the son, he wants to just go do whatever he wants to do. He's tired of doing, going by direction. Now I'm going to bring it back, spiritual turn. The other point, I'm tired of going to church. It's like, Oh, especially when uh, he didn't answer a prayer. <laughs> Lord, I need this this time, this right. <laughs> I asked for prayer for certain things and it didn't happen, so I'm mad. I'm not going to go to church. I don't want to do church. I'm going to go live the way I want to live. Everybody else cussing, I'm going to cuss too. You say something, me slick, I'm going to say something back to you slick. You cut me off, I'm going to go cut you off. All of that. All of that, I experienced it. But how many know when you have been in church and you have powerful people speaking into your life yes. and you have people that pray for you, even though you may stray off, that word never leaves. Amen. That word never leaves. It's already in there, as she said. It's already in there. Even though you might do something, Let's say your friend say, oh, we're going to go X, Y, and Z, and we're going to go do this. In the back of your mind, you're like, man, I remember that verse Brandon told me. And it's going to be eating at you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be eating at you, and you're going to be like, you know what, maybe not. And sometimes us as parents, we worry about our kids. But we have to remember that. You know what? You're going to be all right. You got the word in you. Amen. At some point, it's going to come to pass. Amen. It might not be now, but it will come. Even with my daughter. My daughter, Dad, can I go meet up with a friend? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can go. Who is it? Where is it? What time are you coming back? I have to have faith and trust her that she's going to do everything that she knows is right. Amen. But I also trust that God has already instilled in her the right thing to do in bad situations. Right. If you feel yourself in a situation, you should know. I shouldn't have to right. tell you. I don't have to tell you what to do because God has already instilled it in you. You've been brought up in the church. Right. You've got multiple sermons in you. You have yeah. word in you. You know the word. So I trust that you know what to do in these yeah. situations when you're away from me because we know what you are when you're with us, but I don't know who you are when you're away from uh -huh. us. Right. But I have to trust God to say that I know Amen. they are right. 
Amen. Or gonna be all right. Yeah. Even though we don't see things, or we don't we don't know what exactly they're going through, if they don't tell us, I still trust God. Got it. Amen. It took me a while to come around. I was in church a long time, but that don't mean I was <laughs> have a relationship with them. Amen. Amen. I was in church for a long time, playing keyboard, didn't have a relationship with them. Still doing what I want to do. I'm about rapping in clubs and everything while I was behind the keyboard. Yeah, I'll be performing here. I'll be performing here all across Orlando. I was doing it. And then God had to talk to me. You know, I had to have an encounter with him because I kept messing up. I kept messing up. My, my, uh, I remember the uh, first couple times I was in the jail. Couple times. Quite a few. And everybody was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. But while I was in there, mm. Come on. I got a bottle. I didn't have to grab a bottle. I could have grabbed uh, one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. I could have grabbed that book. But something in the bottle was just calling me. It's like, huh? I'm in this place. So sometimes you gotta, when you go through experiences, God will put you in a place where it's just you and Him. Yeah, and when you have that encounter experience with Him, yeah. that's when it's going to hit you. Amen. That's when it's going to hit you. And sometimes we separate and we be like, God, you're not with me. No, you're not with Him. He never leaves, but uh -huh. we leave Him. Sometimes we neglect Him. He don't neglect us. Amen. And once we walk away, it's like, Oh, what I'm going to do? I can't come back from this. No, you can't come back from this. See, the enemy will tell you that you can't come back home. I left home. I left home. And I left in a bad way. And the enemy telling you, man, I told you you're going to mess up. I told you you're going to be back home. So now you really don't want to go back home. Because the enemy done told you, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I can't go back home. But God loves us. Just as the Father in this welcomed his son back. That's how God is with his children. Amen. He wants us to come back home. Sometimes we stray away, but he wants us to come back. Yeah. And we can come back. Yeah. The enemy will try to tell you, nope, you really messed up this time. Oh, no, you, you no, ain't no coming back from this one. You walk back in the church if you want to. <laughs> oh, you're a hypocrite. All of these things. They tell you this. What your, what your, what the, the, the enemy plays tricks on your mind. The enemy plays tricks on your mind. So you have to be mind strong. You have to know the word. Know the word of God. Every time you get in a situation, there's nothing that happens that we haven't even talked about in this ministry. Everything. Everything we just discussed. Even when we had the Teenage nights, we discuss things, but we have to use those tools. There's always a way out. There's always a way out. There's always a way out. You always come back home, and we can always come back to Jesus. We always come back to God. There's always opportunity. Sometimes we don't see it, but it's there. And sometimes we have to give them time to find it. Thank you, Lord. To find who God really is. Because you can't really understand who God is unless you go through it. When he delivered you from something, you know him as a deliverer. Uh -huh. When he heals you from something, you know yes. him as a healer. Amen. Yes. So God has to form us. It's, it's, it's a hard role. It's hard, especially for youth today. Hmm. It's hard. I'm I'm not I'm not a person that's gonna say, oh, being the walk of faith is easy. I'm not the one to tell you that. I'm sorry. It's tough because you have other people next to you who try to pull you in. You have people that try to pull you in. They try to egg you on. Lay in the wrong corner. Been there. Been the only thing with me. I submitted to it. Peer pressure took me. I was like, okay, let's go. But that's why I'm so adamant about telling you don't listen to it. You have a father here that's mm. can tell you everything. Come on. Come I done on. been through it. Everything. So you can always come back home. Amen. God Amen. wants us to come back home. 
Sometimes we stray away, but God is wanting us to come back home. He wants to give us that hug and say, welcome, my son. It's hard being a youth and you see your friends doing something and you can't participate. It's hard because it's like, then can I, they stand out to 12, it's midnight, it's midnight. It's like, no, I'm sorry, but no. But it's because we protect, like, it's hard to put a shelter on you guys. We put a shelter on you, and then it's like, okay, put you out there, and it's, oh, it's what it really is. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, uh -uh, I'm going to leave. But we try to hide that stuff from you because we want the best. We want the best. A lot of us, um, we did it. We get it. We understand that we got friends, and they're going to do stuff, but we trust in you that the God that we we serve, you understand and get to know that you have your own relationship with God and he talks with you yeah. if you listen. Mm -hmm. If you listen. God talked to me, I did not listen. <laughs> I was disobedient and I knew I was being disobedient because I knew the word of God but I wasn't mm -hmm. trusting in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even when you come in the church, I know it's like... <laughs> I get it. I was your age too. I get it. But let some of this word sink in. I know that's right. When you hear certain things and it's about you and it pierce your heart and you like, man, that's me. Mm. Write this stuff down. Yeah. Take the time and be like, man, I want to read that scripture because that's a, a, a that relates to me. I can understand how you feel. My son is Sean. He should understand how this man feels in this story. Dad, I'm tired. I'm, you know what? I, 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 I just, I'm just going to go. You know? And I get it. I was like I told him. I said, look, I understand. But I want everyone in this building to know you can always come back home. Amen. God is welcoming you back. Don't worry about what your, what your, if, if your son not here. If your daughter's not here, trust that God is going to work it out. Thank you. Amen. Trust that God is working on it. I'm proof that God will work it out. I wasn't always right. <laughs> Brandon can take from stories. I wasn't always a good person. I did some crazy stuff, but I had an encounter and I had a good an experience with God. And it made me change. All that attitude, all that pride, all that stuff has to go. But never give up. Yes, Lord. Never give up. Somebody was praying for me. Somebody was there for me. I had someone to talk to. Um, Pastor was big. Pastor, he was my second father. He, I remember I would make the flyers for uh for one of my concerts I was doing here, brother. <laughs> come, in, come in the office. Let me talk to you. <laughs> but he wants the best. He wants the best for us. He wants the best for us. This is something I want everybody to hear. Because a lot of times we lose faith in what God is doing. We lose faith in what God is doing. We often say, um, we have faith. Oh, I believe it, I believe it, but do you truly believe it? We pray for things, but we have to believe when we pray. Amen. Come on. Amen. All right. We can't, we can't have that doubt, period. That's right. Turn me up. We can't have that doubt, That's right. period. That's right. So this song is... Turn me up. This song is one of those songs that pierce my heart. If you just listen to the word, what do you do in situation? Can you keep the faith? When it don't look good, can you keep the faith? What do we do in situations look bad? Do we lose faith? that we don't Hallelujah. see. Tell somebody on your 
praying will be. We just have to keep the faith and trust that it's going to change. But we got to trust that our situation is going to change. We got to trust that our circumstances change. We believe in God for this house. Come on, come on. But we have to keep the faith. We just sometimes it don't look like it. We get a bunch of no's. But we got to keep the faith. Come on, come on, come on. situation you believe in God for keep the faith keep the faith yes 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 you want to be a professional basketball football player all right it don't happen the first second year right. keep the faith right want to be a veterinarian keep the faith Whatever you want to do, keep the faith. You might not, you might not see it. Right. You might not see it. The word says, "Walk by faith, not by sight." That means trust God. Trust God. You want to be a drive a monster truck? Keep the faith. <laughs> keep the faith. Keep believing. You can do this. All right. Oh, Father God, we come home before you right now, Father God. And I thank you for the word of Father God that went forth, oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I can see myself in the problem, Son of God. And I want to come back home, God. Father God, I come to you right now, Father God. Lord, and I thank you, oh, Father God, for accepting me back. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for forgiving me, oh, Father God. Repent. <laughs> Turn away from your sins. The God is there with open arms to receive. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, speak to everyone right now, Father God. There's people, oh Father God, that's not here, oh Father God. Father God, we pray for them right now, Father God. Wherever yes. capacity they have, yes. oh Father God, wherever yes. they may be, oh Father God. Yes. Father God, we want you, oh Father God, to just cover them, oh Father God. Let them have an encounter with you, oh Father God. Let them have a Holy yes. Ghost experience with you, oh Father God. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, change their minds, oh Father God. Yes. Change the way they're thinking, yes. oh Father God. Father God, change, oh Father God, the circumstances that they're in, oh Father God, and help them to come back to you, oh Father God, yeah. in the name of Jesus, Lord. Bring them back home, oh God. Father God, we accept them, oh Father God. You said, oh Father God, 
Come as we all, Father God. We might be broken, oh Father God, but we're coming back home, oh Father God. Oh God, thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing, oh Father God. Lord, we believe, oh Father Amen. God. We believe, oh Father yes. God. We will keep the faith, oh Father yes. God. Yes. For you reign over everything. You are a sovereign God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.